in uh, this uh, paper, I'm going to speak about something like a rather uh, unusual, I would say, matter about some uh, try, uh, trying to understand the, some linguistic features of Sogdian in the framework of uh, its history, its archaeology, and uh, so on. So I will be speaking not so much about tests, but rather about some individual words, usually uh, nouns, and try to find some uh, references to it in various parts of history. So this is a kind of collection of essays, uh, uh, quite short ones about some short etymological uh, notes, uh, which may be some, which have some interest maybe. Some of them are for sure, some others are hypothetic, some others are like variant possibilities of doing things and so on. So in this work, usually the linguists are work, the um, uh, Iranian studies is very much related to the historical linguistics or comparative linguistics, so the history of languages and their comparison and joining to uh, uh, one another into uh, uh, genetic units and uh, so on. And of course, this uh, 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 Sogdian language is, uh, yeah, it is uh, here. It is one of uh, Iranian languages. The Iranian language group is closely, Iranian language group is closely related to Indo-Aryan language group, and they all uh, are part of Indo-European family, as all of you know, like other most languages of Europe, including French and uh, some languages of Asia, and now also America and Australia, and, and even Africa. Uh, 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 so, and uh, the, uh, uh, one of the important features of these Indo-European uh, uh, languages uh, of the hi uh, uh, historical linguistics, which is developed firstly for Indo-European languages, but also for many others, such as uh, uh, Finno-Ugric languages, for example, are the correspondences of one, uh, of one sound, one phonetic unit to another in the different uh, languages, according to uh, more or less uh, well-established uh, groups. So sometimes correspondences are quite obvious and sometimes not. So uh, in the Indo-European baratr develops in Persian barodar, English brother, Slavonic brat, Latin frater, and so on. It is obvious. Sometimes it's not so obvious. So Indo-European word for uh, wheel, quekolo, something like this, would give in Persian charch, in, Slavo, in old Slavonic kolo, kukel, in Tocharian, oldest landing well, English wheel, and in Sanskrit, chakra. And chakra is probably the word which not only Sanskritists uh, know today because it comes to, it came to European languages and uh, the uh, first picture at Google, at Google Images which showed chakra was like this. So uh, I think that most of you know that uh, chakra is more a kind of, uh, yeah, units in the uh, Asian, uh, Asian Indian medicine, in the uh, yoga and so on, which are concealed somehow in the person, and not many people know that it originally means wheel. So, it, uh, so etymologically, English wheel and chakra are the same words, but we see that they are not de de developed completely differently into different languages, but uh, uh, they uh, also have completely different meaning. And chakra uh, is a loan word in English, meaning these uh, points and so on. And in order to understand that, we have to, first of all, to dwell into uh, Indian uh, philology, philosophy, medicine, and so on, to understand that the wheel was a very important thing for the proto uh, pro for the ancient Indo-Aryan peoples who were charioters and that this wheel was the idea of the world of world turning around itself and uh, uh, micro and macrocosmic idea of the wheel of the world was very common and in yoga this macrocosmic wheel macrocosmic ideas turned into microcosm into what is in inside the person and uh, uh, and that's why finally in yoga we have these uh, chakras which are inside the skeleton of the uh, human. But why did it enter 
in, uh, Western languages. Because Western philosophy, uh, Western medicine, until uh, quasi medicine, yeah, until late 19th century, didn't know any ideas about these chakras. So this concept was alien. And only by the end of 19th century, with the development of this interest into Eastern things, into Oriental mystics, and so on, this term for chakra appeared. Uh, in the Western languages. So this is a kind of a methodological uh, thing to know that we have to trace the, uh, uh, why the term is borrowed and uh, in which form, in which linguistic uh, uh, form, which is more or less uh, regular. So the German uh, scholars of the early 20th uh, century developed the uh, uh, special field of study, which we called in German Wörter und Sachen, so the words and the things, the items, so which means that the change of meaning often corresponds to change of things. As Rudolf Meringer, the father of this idea, coined more than 100 uh, years ago. And so in other, in uh, our, uh, uh, in, 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 uh, during the next 50 minutes, we will speak about this some words combining with some realia. So in some cases, we need to analyze the etymology of the words, so their phonetic features, and very important is analysis of loan words, time and direction of loan words, and of course, phonological analysis of context where these words are attested. And we compare it to reality, archaeological, historical, artistic, even zoological, and so on. Sometimes this method appears to be a kind of a charade game of understanding how the things are related to one another. So you are maybe puzzled with the logical things, and we will start with them. So just a, uh, a good example, uh, a classical Persian word sheer, or modern sheer, which means from one side, uh, lion, and from other side, tap of uh, water. There is, uh, those who know Persian also know that there is another word, sheer, which means milk, but it historically it's completely different. It doesn't have much hul a vowel, but long e. How could they combine to one another? Actually, the answer is in the history of the water supply in the world. The uh, mouths or uh, the head of the lion was usually a decorating of tap or a fontaine in the west or sometimes in the east, like in uh, central Turkey. That's why the lion becomes the uh, tap for water. Uh, 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 this, uh, this is not really zoology, uh, uh, and as well as the next thing is not really the uh, botanics. We know in the European word for ship, nous, or uh, uh, here I omit uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the, the uh, uh, laryngal uh, things in respect of Indo European uh, 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 linguistics, which are very important in, in uh, phonological things, but not so important for us, and they are kind of um, uh, not making things uh, uh, more clear so we can avoid it and not write nehus with second age. Uh, so in the European nous, which uh, is Latin navis, Gallic nausum, uh, Old Indian nava, Persian nav, which means ship. And on the other hand, we have the word for gutter or canal or ravine, like nav, nova, and probably a western navia, can also come here. How these two can be combined? How can we explain these two things? We have to look at the most uh, old and uh, most archaic model of a ship, or rather of a boat. Here it is from the Hermitage. So it is a trunk of a tree, which is cut from inside, and it turns into a boat. And this is the image of Nava, the photo of Nava, of Nav, I've taken in uh, in Yagnop, in the, Zerafsha, in the Zerafshan Mountains. And you see, so uh, the idea is of something like aqueduct, to bring water above a gorge. And it is the same trunk. So the wooden trunk, uh, hollow in the center, or half of the trunk, put like this. So in some cases, it can be used as, uh, uh, as uh, 
a boat, and in some cases with uh, slight modifications, it can be a gutter. Uh, or another thing, turning back to uh, zoology, is the mythical kara fish. Kara in a western, in Pahlavi kar, the biggest fish, a guardian of sacred tree and mythological fish. And so again, it's a kind of a uh, great uh, uh, whale who swallows, uh, jo uh, who swallows kind of Jonah in one of the uh, Manichaean uh, tales. Uh, etymologically, this kara, as it was shown by Pokorne and by Henning, comes from Indo-European squalos, like Latin squalos or German wells. All of them meet catfish. But why? Why could this catfish become the uh, uh, superfish? Because it is the superfish. So the, uh, 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 the catfish is one of the biggest fishes in the uh, sweet water. This is the fish, the catfish, which was found, uh, which was, uh, uh, fo found in Sirdarya in Yaxartes. Uh, in a few, few years ago in the Kazakh side, and it is bigger than a uh, human. It's not digestible, because this big uh, catfish, because it's all made of fat now and nothing to eat. There is even a bigger, var, but, uh, bigger one, uh, catfish, but it was found in Chernobyl, so it doesn't touch us here. <laughs> uh, 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 so these giant catfishes, they are living in uh, various rivers of uh, Eurasia, and so the proverbial ones, the ones which are reported to eat humans, were in Volga River, and in Amudarya River, and in Sirdarya River. This map also shows that they exist in uh, Sefidrud, but I don't know to how big are they there. Uh, just. No, not so big. So I think that if the pro, uh, some member of a Western community would ever find a fish like that, he would immediately put it into his mythological framework as a kind of a super fish. Uh, so this could be a kind of indication that this Western community passed somehow through the uh, volleys of Sirdaria and Amudaria. And from this big fish, we come to a very small insect, the ant. And uh, 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 it has the similar words in Sogden and in Horasmian, zmurak, zmurch, uh, zmurik, which has its second part, so murak, murch, murik, has the good correspondences in Indo-European. It's a Western Maori, Hotanis Munjaka, Middle Persian Moor, modern Tajik Murche, Murcha, uh, Greek Murmex, and so on, from Indo-European uh, root. But here we have initial Z, which is very difficult to explain, and my proposition is to reconstruct it as a simplification of Zam Marwi, Earth Ant, the Ant of Earth. But why? What has this Ant to do with Earth? And what appears, and what is very good known for everybody who digs the soil of uh, Central Asia and probably in Iran. There are many ants there in the soil, but unlike what we know from Europe, from moderate zone, where the ants built ant houses above the, surf the surface of the ground, nothing like that is found in uh, Central Asia and probably also in Iran. So, uh, uh, this is early the earth ant, an ant which doesn't build ant house above their uh, ground level. So this could be a nomination which uh, appeared when the um, uh, progenitors of Sogdians and Horasmians entered their, uh, their modern habitus from the northern zone, from a uh, steppe zone. Uh, so I started already speaking about uh, Sogdian language, and uh, further I will speak more and more about Sogdian and some neighboring languages as well. So for just for some information, trivia about Sogdian, it's an Eastern Iranian language of the middle period like Bactrian, Horasmian, Khotanese, uh, 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 Alanic, uh, uh, 
the main texts are dated to 4th to 10th century of Common Era and were found in Turfan and Dunhua, the majority of texts, but not all of them. Very important the texts were found elsewhere. And mostly they were found in early 20th century during the great exploration of that, re uh, that region. The language is written mostly in three varieties of Western Semitic alphabet. The Sogdian script uh, so, uh, or national script, I will speak about it uh, on in, uh, more in detail in our uh, forthcoming uh, lecture in Manichaean script and in Christian Syriac script, another variation very, very similar to Estrangela. But there is also a number of secular documents or te texts referring to the well, what difficult to, some people call it Mazdaism, so Sogdian variation of Zoroastrianism or ancestral religion of Sogdians, which has very close ties to Zoroastrianism. I don't want to uh, dwell uh, in these matters uh, today. So Sogdian language died out in the Middle Ages, but in the mountains of Tajikistan, modern Yignobi language is continuation of a dialect close to Sogdian. So it is not continuation of the written Sogdian language. It's a different, uh, it's, its uh, 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 origins are somewhat different. So they're not really relations of mother and uh, daughter, but the relation of aunt and of a cousin. Uh, and in Sogdian, Sogdians, uh, who were so active in trade and in intercourse with various peoples around had a great number of uh, connections of their language. So the linguistic connection, the loan words in first instance are mirroring their, uh, uh, their real uh, relations. And this is of course not the complete picture. So I avoid here, for example, Tokar uh, Tokarian loans from Sogdian, which are, uh, uh, we, which are uh, quite, uh, quite well attested uh, and uh, some others. And uh, he, here this map shows the relation of some words which I am going to speak about. Uh, so Sogdian is in the center, then are several Iranian languages. These are the donor languages for Sogdian and these are recipient. Uh, and these are the languages surrounding uh, Sogdiana, according actually to what was defined as worldview of Sogdians by Franz Grenet. So to the north there are Turks, to the south there are Indians, to the west there are sometimes Persians, sometimes Byzantines, and to the east they are, there are Chinese. Uh, this great amount of loan words in Sogdian is in sharp contrast with what we see in Yagnobe language, so the continuation of a dialect close to Sogdian. Only three words could I find among the whole vocabulary of Yagnobe, which has pre-Islamic pre loans. So there is a plenty of Arabic words, of course. There is a great, great number, unlimited number of uh, Tajik words in uh, Yagnobe language. There, are, uh, there is a serious group of Turkic loans. Not of all of them are very recent, and some are quite archaic and interesting. Uh, uh, but only three of them are from uh, pre-Islamic times. Some of them are disputable, like what is the origin of Sogdian Ark and Middle Persian Harg uh, work, and Karakh is a difficult word, and so on. So unlike Laul and Sogdians, the ancestors of Yagnobis did not probably contact with others. So they were living in their uh, valleys, in their mountains, and had very little contact to any other uh, people. That's the reason for this humble number of loan words in Yagnobe. And now I think let's say something completely opposite to what is usually said by the purists who exist, I think, in all uh, uh, yeah, language communities of the world who try to clean their languages from the foreign loans to make it pure without any loans and so on. From this table we understand that the number of loan words indicates the richness of the culture. If there are less loan words, the culture is not so rich. In, in the case of Yignobi and uh, Sogdian, that is quite obvious. And now let's turn to some of the words 
Some of the small things have been published, some of it, some are not, some are for sure, some are dubious. Uh, but uh, 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 so uh, here there will be the loan words and uh, the ideas to date them and to understand them. So let's start with uh, Greek uh, words in Sogdian, and I took only three ones of them which are important for one study. One, two of them are the names of uh, coins or uh, measure, you measure of weight in Sogdian. One is ester from Greek stater, tetradrachma, and another is drachm from Greek drachme. Uh, 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 so, uh, Another thing which have to be have to put into this consideration concerning drachm is Jemat, the name of a uh, goddess in uh, Sogdiana, which was explained by Nicholas Sims Williams first as Greek Demeter. Here we see the development that Demeter turned into Dremet, the form Dremat, the form we know in a uh, Bactrian language, and then this initial dr changed into j which is the normal development, the standard development in Sogdian. But we do not see it with Greek drachme. So here, dr, dr, continuous in Sogdian and doesn't turn into zh. Uh, I was puzzled with this for a while, and then I realized that the uh, drachm uh, came into Sogdian language later, after this shift of dr, into je ceased and did not exist anymore. And indeed, the word stare is attested in ancient letters, first of all, very many times. But drachm doesn't appear before 7th century. I think the first attestation is the uh, contract of the female slave uh, in, uh, uh, from uh, Kocho and in Mount Muk documents, quite of course. So it appears only in the 7th century. Uh, my idea, consequently, is that stare it borrows from Greek stater, but directly. But drachm is not borrowed directly from Greek, but from Middle Persian, from Sasanian drachm, which makes a very good sense because uh, uh, this uh, stare would mean a coin of Hellenistic type. The uh, Hellenic coins came into Asia with Alexander and continued to be minted and then by imit to be imitated until uh, 7th century, if effectively until 4th century. So this is a uh, good variety of Antioch coin from, Samarka, from early Samarkand. And this drachm is Middle Persian drachm, the Sasanian drachm, the main currency which uh, uh, became very widespread and very much imitated in Middle Asia, but at a later period. So for imitation, we can say about fifth and sixth uh, century. I didn't have a chance now to uh, look to the silog with uh, about uh, coins found in Uzbekistan and Tajikistan to understand when, what are actually the first numerous drachm to be found, uh, Sasanian drachms to be found in, uh, uh, in Sogdiana and around it. So uh, this is stair, this is drachm, and this is, by the way, jemat. The uh, Demetra in the uh, um, in, in uh, the painting with um, lamentation from Panjakant. It was recently restored uh, in the Hermitage. Uh, another group of loan words also related uh, with uh, some uh, surety to uh, coinage are some loan names, personal names which are loaned in Sogdian from the dialects related to Sisian, Sarmatian, and Saka peoples. So this is the list of some of the better names which might be explained with more or less surety as loans or something related to Sisian, Sarmatian, indo saka things uh, like the verse containing ascetic Ardar, military chief, or parallel to ascetic Exardag, the hero of Nautic epics, Aziz. And some of them, the one in bold, 
are the names of this type which appear quite commonly on, uh, as the names of rulers. Chirth Sawan is the ruler of Samarkand in 311 in, uh, uh, in the ancient letters. Dach is also Dach, appears on one of the uh, 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 on one of the inscriptions on civil vessels at the king. Mavak, Van Van, and Hercodes are the names we know from the coins. So it looks like that uh, uh, these uh, names were at one point the names typical for the nobility, for the upper class of Sogdiana, who indeed were the uh, representatives of uh, some uh, um, uh, of some steppe uh, Iranian people. So we have images of them. So uh, uh, the, of three of these kings with uh, somewhat uh, uh, Sisian uh, names. So Hercodes, Mavak, and Banvan. And we see here that their faces are also look not like Sogdians, but rather like this nomadic peoples with a ribbon in their head and with the protruding uh, head with cranial deformation, which was typical for these uh, nomads and uh, so on. So I think that these names are one of the indications of the ethnic origin of the rulers of Sogdiana before more or less classical period, before uh, uh, seventh century. But of course, many of these uh, names uh, continued to live uh, later. Uh, so uh, that's uh, oh, uh, that's about Skisas Armada, and I'm jumping from one item to another, from uh, one language to another, and the next thing is the Sogdian deity Vreshman. Vreshman is a Sogdian form of, uh, usually it's considered to be the Sogdian form of Buddhist Vaishravana, the guardian of the Norse. This Sogdian form, Vreshman is, has similarities in Kotanese Vreshmam, Bactrian Vresomano, uh, uh, Hebrew Sanskrit Vaishramana, and not Vaishravana, but its phonetic shape is unusual. So the change of R from the end to the beginning and the change of, uh, m in, of V into M is uh, quite unusual. It is a uh, Buddhist uh, 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 figure, so it is uh, Indian uh, deity in Hinduism. It is often an epithet of uh, Kubera, and in uh, uh, Buddhism, it's guardian of the nose, the head of the Loka palace of gardens of the sides of the universe. And he was usually represented as armored gentleman above a dwarf. He was always in armor. Uh, the recent uh, uh, Buddhist, uh, encyclopedic Buddhist dictionary claims that origin of Vaishravana cult might be in Khotan, where this image was found. And thanks to the article of Franz Grenet of almost 20 uh, years old, Vaishravana and Sogdiana, we know that this Vreshman also stepped outside Buddhist context in uh, uh, Sogdian art. So he was a, an armored uh, god standing on a dwarf, which was found on uh, several wall paintings in Panjagyan. He was all usually next to Nanaya. Another indication came uh, uh, more recently from the uh, uh, sarcophagus of Virkak, of the Sogdian noble in uh, Xi'an, and he is very detailed uh, uh, in the very detailed epitaph. The names of his family are named, and none of them had uh, Buddhist connotations. So one of them was Rstat Vandye, slave of truth, uh, Vanuk, victorious one, uh, Virkak, small wolf, uh, wolf Elaya, Ushi, Aurora, etymologically the same word, the down, slave of Demeter, Jemat Vandye, as we told, and this Vreshman Vande. So also the text doesn't have any Buddhist connotations, but Vreshman is translated in Chinese as Pisha, so also the name of uh, Vaishravana. Uh, 
uh, what made me curious about that was a reading of uh, recent re-reading of uh, 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 the Rastrian items from Armenia in the book of Mikhail Shenkar, where I realized the reference completely forgotten by me about Barshamin, one of the goddesses who, uh, who is existed in, Ar in Armenia. So Astrik is the goddess of Armenian provenance. This Barshamin is kind of Syrian and all the other are Iranian uh, gods, uh, Zoroastrian gods. And it was clear that Barshamin comes from Aramaic Baal Shamin, Lord of Heaven. He was uh, the deity of initially uh, 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 Phoenician uh, peoples, but later was widespread in Palmyra, for example, and in Hatra. Uh, uh, this Barshamin, of course, looks very similar to our uh, Vreshman, of especially taking into account that Western Iranian B corresponds to V in Sogdian. And uh, in this Armenian Barshamin, this R on the place of uh, Semitic L indicates that the, this word was borrowed via an Iranian language. So there could be a possibility that Sogdian Vreshman and, and Khotanese Vreshomano uh, as well could be a kind of contamination of Vaishravana and uh, uh, Iranian uh, god Barshamin of uh, Semitic origin. But it is all quite uh, unsure. So this is a possibility which I would like to investigate more and take into account, but I cannot believe in it completely because the uh, other parallels between Baal Shamin and Vreshman, well, they exist. When you, when you take two gods so slightly known to us, you will find some parallels uh, between them. It's quite clear. So Baal Shamin marries Nanaya, for example, in, the, uh, in one of the demotic texts from uh, uh, from uh, Egypt, and our Vreshman sits next, uh, stands next to Nanaya in Sogdian paintings. But I think that they are quite few, and uh, it is just the similarity of names. So maybe for Sogdian Vreshman, we don't need to take into account Baal Shamin and Armenian Bar Shamin. Uh, so as I said to you, many things I'm speaking about are controversial, disputable, and so on, this is the case. Another deity which uh, was found in uh, Sogdiana uh, uh, in unusual contexts is Mahakar, who is uh, explained as a restful, uh, uh, as Mahakala in India. So one of them is the text uh, uh, P3, the uh, magical uh, text, uh, which was recently translated by Franz Grenet and Samra Zarnouch. Uh, and uh, so in this text, which uh, does not have uh, necessarily Buddhist connotations, uh, the oath with Mahakala is mentioned. So it is a kind of a deity outside uh, Buddhist context. More interesting is the Christian Sogdian text of uh, Passion of uh, Saint George. Uh, usually these Christian texts do not uh, have any indications of uh, local uh, religion, but here it is. So on the place where uh, George had to destroy the idol of Apollo, in Greek and in Syriac version, he is destroying the idol of Mahakar, and then the sound comes from the Mahakar, and the demon is running from this figure. So it means that Mahakar was a kind of a uh, uh, was a kind of a deity known outside Buddhist context. It's probably not nothing, not very positive and not very nice, as we know from. Uh, we see from the George's passion. Uh, uh, and of course, it was known for long that this Mahakar is a Sogdian rendering of a Buddhist name uh, of Indian uh, deity Mahakala. Uh, Mahakala is uh, uh, 
uh, it uh, appears in uh, 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 in Indian contexts and in Buddhist contexts means great blue black or great time and was a dancing restful uh, deity with dark uh, body and it was very prominent in Tibetan uh, Buddhism. Uh, so these images are uh, uh, t Tibetan uh, and in uh, Sogdian in Sogdiana, we have the images of this, of uh, the restful uh, Shiva, of dancing Shiva, Shiva Nataraja. So this is one of the uh, paintings preserved in the Hermitage. So here with the Shiva with blue body and with uh, uh, trident under his hand dancing. He has actually three heads and it is in the Hermitage and this uh, and uh, this uh, picture I know only from uh, publications at one of the early finds in Hermitage. Here also Sogdians in Sogdian dresses, like here the gentlemen are in Sogdian dresses, are offering something to this blue-bodied dancing diet similar to Shiva. And another item is now in the Museum of Antiquities in Dushanbe uh, with uh, the same blue bodied uh, dancer with uh, uh, ugly face. So I think that the comparison of these uh, attestations of Mahakala and attestations of this, uh, uh, of, uh, this deities in Sogdiana make it clear that this deity, this negative feature of Shiva was called Mahakar, which has, by the way, some uh, alliteration to the name of positive Shiva, which is in Sogdian. Veshparkar, which was explained by uh, Helmut Humber uh, many years ago. And so this was about the loans to Sogdian from other languages. And now several examples of how Sogdian words unusually entered the uh, languages of uh, their neighbors. So one of them is the word for beads in the Pamir. It is in Ishkashimi Mishti Chowar, it's uh, uh, Hindu Kush language, Dardic language. Mishti, Vahi, Dhar Mishti, small beads, there is Persian Dur, the pearl, and so on. And this Mishti doesn't have etymology on the soil of uh, uh, Pamir and Hindu Kush. And so I propose that this Mishti comes from Sogdian Mushti, Mujeti, pearls, beads, seeds, or seals or gemstones from Old Iranian mudra, Middle Persian muhr, and so on. The word muj or muje is well attested in Sogdian language. How could it happen? So we know much about Sogdians trading in these regions in the Hindu Kush, in Pamir, in Karakorum, in medieval times, and they were passing by. There are records of how the king of Shugnan captured precious th silks from uh, Sogdian merchants and um, kept it in his treasury. And even in ethnographic times, uh, the, uh, uh, the anthropologists recorded that the people there in that region don't really trust money and don't believe in money and don't use money or coins. Oh, uh, that, uh, that is true. So uh, returning to our previous lecture, there was only two four coins found altogether at Hisarak in the mountains and uh, sometimes bargaining about money with uh, uh, people in the mountains is something very strange because the idea of money is very different from others. But they, were, but they like, uh, like beads very much. So these are the images of uh, Ishkashimi and Shugni, gentleman and lady. And you see that here and here on the neck, neck they have some beads attached. So Sogdians could uh, travel there, make trade, we know that they travel there, and exchange with beads. And so that's uh, the typical uh, feature with, uh, which is well known from the colonial times in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the New World and uh, so on. And uh, they exchanged uh, something for beads and that's why the beads are uh, the word for beads uh, from Sogden was borrowed in uh, this uh, territory. I forgot to say that uh, the burials uh, in uh, 
Pamir also indicate the presence of imported beads for a large uh, amount, even older than the, uh, uh, the, 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 than the climax of uh, Sogdian trade. Another word which I propose to understand as terracotta figurine and then statue and so on is again attested in the P3 text kept in Bibliothèque Nationale and edited for the last time by Franz Grenet and Samra Hazarnouche. So uh, uh, in the preparation of uh, making rains, uh, 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 the, uh, the, mag uh, the magician had to make this cup badizak, which is translated now as couvercle avec un bloc de sandal. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a possible explanation, but uh, in Old Turkic, we have the word bediz, bediz, which means a statue or a, um, uh, sometimes a balbal, sometimes a small figurine, sometimes an image, and so on. It is attested uh, several times in Old Turkic texts, beginning with uh, runic text. Uh, it is theoretically possible that uh, the Turkic word entered uh, Sogdian at the time of uh, P3. But I think that Iranian etymology of this uh, item is uh, more or less clear. It comes from old Iranian root abi dies. Abi is proverb and dies means to press, to form, to make something, to make impression, to impress. Uh, uh, something. So it is the way how the uh, Sogdians produced terracotta, uh, um, uh, uh, terracotta images with one mouth, just impression of matrix on their uh, clay. Uh, this is not, 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 not very typical Sogdian terracotta, but one of the most uh, beautiful ones. And uh, so Initially, that would meet this impressed uh, terracotta, but then it could generalize into a more uh, widespread concept of a figurine or of a statue. It's important that according to archeological data, the, uh, uh, the main production of terracotta was already gone by seventh century, so the Heap, uh, the most part of them belong to fifth to sixth uh, century. Uh, uh, this is uh, 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 how, Iro how Sogdian word entered Turkic. And there is a great number of Sogdian words in uh, Persian. Now this number has to be diminished seriously because many of them appear to be not uh, Sogdian loan words but uh, Bactrian loan words, but one of them I think is still Sogdian, and even if it is Bactrian, it's worth interest. It's the word varg or barg, like, which means uh, dam. It is attested in classical uh, uh, texts in Rudaki, Ferrochi, Attar, and other poets. It's very often attested in the uh, medieval. Uh, dictionaries, and today it is used in the territory of uh, Central Asia and of Afghanistan. I don't know if this word exists today in, uh, in present-day Iran. Uh, it is attested in toponymy of Sogdiana, where Varg means dam, most famous is Varaksar, the head of the dam near up, uh, uh, upstream of Samarkand, and there is the ruler Vrachchik Huvu, the Lord of Var in Mount Muk documents. I propose to derive this uh, word Var from old Iranian Bagra, the dividing one, from the root Bag. Uh, so uh, phon phonetically everything is fine. In Sogdian initial B turns into V, Gr turns into R, and then there is metatasis to R, -r so Var has a direct continuation of Bagra. But what's for the meaning? And here we have also to look at the concept of dam. What was it doing uh, at that time? It was separating waters. The waters from the main course are separated from the uh, waters which go into the canal. 
and Persian dear geography of Hudud al Alam of 10th century states that Varaksar, so the head of the dam, is above Samarkand, is the place for distribution of waters of Samarkand, Khismargohe Ab. And indeed, there at Varaksar, present day Rawati Khaja, the main canals of uh, Samarkand to Aziz, uh, Bulungur, and uh, Dargam separate from. Uh, uh, for, for, uh, for, for, from uh, Zarafshan itself. This is the photo, the, the photo of Varaksar in 1930s in the museum located at uh, Rabati Khaja. And uh, we spoke about Sogdian language as a um, recipient of some words, as donor of some words, but in many cases Sogdian was a transmitter, so located on the trade routes and interrelated with many cultures uh, uh, around it, it was one of the actors to produce one, uh, uh, an item from one uh, um, cultural milieu to another. So even Sogdian language itself played the same role. So it was the mediator how Aramaic, Sogdian script, I mean, uh, sorry, how the Aramaic script uh, uh, turned to become uh, uh, Turkic Uyghur script, and then Mongol script, and then uh, Manju script. And as Mongol script, it is still used today in Inner Mongolia, in China. And uh, there are some words uh, 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 which indicate Sogdian and this important transmitter. One of them, the origin is in, Chin in Chinese, it's Te or Chai. I'm sorry for my uh, Chinese pronunciation. Ancient is Tsek, writing table, register, document, which was borrowed into Sogdian Chak, Horasmian Chek, Bactrian Tsak, and later it came to Persian Chek, Arabic Shak, French Chek, and so on. So this means this document receipt, and so on. And without uh, Sogdian mediation, we, would d we wouldn't have checks. Yeah. Uh, uh, another word, we, uh, so this, uh, uh, the, the initial idea was by uh, David Neil Mackens and then Franz Grenin, Detienne de Lavasia discovered Sogdian word and Nicholas Sims Williams, uh, the Bactrian word. Another uh, word also has a very long history with Sogdian intimidation and we have to look to the north of China, to the territory of Shunnu in the uh, Han times. According to, uh, to Han Shu, ceremonial sword of Sun Nu was called like Jing Lu, which is in uh, uh, early Chinese reconstructed pronunciation, Kang Ra. Uh, it is one of the main indications that Sun Nu language was related to Turkish, Turkic, because in Turkey there is Kirgrah, carved knife, still used today in Kyrgyz language for example, but it was also probably borrowed in Sogdian, Hangar, Khagar, Horasmian, Khagar, Bakhtian, Khangar, in, uh, in uh, modern uh, uh, Pamirian, Hindu Kush words, Hugor, Hingar, and so on. It is Parthian, Hanjir, Persian and Arabic, Khanjar, Tatar, Khanjar, Russian, Kinjal, a very widespread word, and in some English dictionaries, I found Dejer named as Kanjiar. So this is the word which is um, uh, probably uh, comes to our day from the language of the Shunnu. And what is lacking here is the uh, history of concept. So what was this uh, sword, or maybe one-sided sword, maybe Dejer, which was uh, so important among Shunnu that it was later borrowed into many languages of the peoples who were subject to Shunnu, to Huns, in uh, later periods. Uh, one of these words where the Sogdian uh, mediation is, uh, or Horasmian mediation is also attested is found in Russian rather archaic word busurman or busurmanin, which means uh, now it is a kind of outdated non-believer, foreigner or pagan. Uh, uh, so in the 
first half of uh, 19th century, it had a very specific meaning. So the army of Napoleon was called Busurmania. Uh, uh, so, and it is, of course, means initially Muslim. So Russian Busurmanian comes from Turkic, Musurman, Busurman, Besurman in various languages, which means Muslim. This change of initial M into B is uh, quite typical in, uh, in, uh, the, uh, in Turkic languages of together, but not the case with R. Uh, so uh, we cannot find an example how a foreign L would turn internally into R in uh, Turkic. And here the languages like Sorasmian and Sogdian can help because there the phoneme, uh, phonetic value of L was very low and in many loan words this L was replaced with uh, R, sometimes Z, and indeed in Horaspian we have the form Musurman. Uh, it is attested. So we could speculate that Persian word, uh, that Persian Musulman turned into Khorazmian Musulman and then into Turkic Busurman, but the earliest attestations in Turkic, namely in the uh, uh, in uh, uh, Christian epitaphs from uh, Semiratia, they are also with negative connotations. Busur Busurman uh, uh, indicate that it should come from Sogdian, because we cannot suppose the direct link between Horasmians and uh, uh, the Semiratia where these uh, uh, words were found. So in any case, Sogdian or Horasmian mediation is here necessary. And uh, we are finishing the last word and uh, the final brick in the wall. Uh, uh, also a word which is very well known in Russian, it is kirpich, which means brick. For a long time it was believed, and it is true, that it comes into Russian from Turkic languages. So in Mahmud Kashgari in 11th century it's Kerpich, in Karakalpak today for example, Gerbich, in Azerbaijani Kerpich, and so on. And recently Christian Oreg attested this word in Buddhist Sogdian, in very clear context of a brick, which is like this, Kerpich. And Christiana also explained it's uh, as Sogdian loan words into Turkic. It doesn't have Turkic or Altaic etymology, by the way. And in Sogdian, it is the derivative with suffix ich, very widespread in Sogdian from what is uh, karp in uh, Old Iranian and Western karp, karp, which means form. But importantly, this is not the direct derivation of Old Iranian into Sogdian, where one would expect something like kishpich or kirthpich, but from Western Iranian, such as Middle Persian kirb. And according to her idea, it is the one made in the form. And how could it be? What are realia behind this word? So this is the designation of, initially it was designation of sun-dried brick formed in rectangular molds, like today. And unlike hand-formed oblong bricks or globs, uh, I don't know how you say it in, uh, in, in French or in English, in Russian, bulkavidne uh, kerpichi, which were not shaped in the uh, rectangular, not, not, not in the mold. Uh, and these are used in Fergana today. These sun-dried bricks formed in the rectangular mold were entered into Sogdiana, uh, first for fortification reasons, but then for others, from uh, Western Iran in Achaemenid period, maybe at a later stage. So the uh, excavations of uh, Afrasiab are crucial in that uh, respect. And since then were well incorporated in the Sogdian culture. So if it doesn't even calculate these uh, uh, sun-dried bricks as uh, archaeological finds. They are so numerous and uh, uh, so uh, typical 
they, uh, uh, of course, they have very good identification for the date and location. So in various places and in various times, the size of the brick was different. But this uh, 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 molded rectangular or square brick is uh, common elsewhere. The nomadic Turks could borrow it uh, somewhat later. Uh, I know information about Semirechia, uh, um, the development of uh, construction motifs in Semirechia and Hakasia, but probably in Turfan there could be uh, some similar developments. I, uh, I haven't uh, looked it through. And later they produced to start baked bricks in Islamic uh, times, which became quite common uh, for monumental buildings in Islamic times. And is a baked brick, it entered into Rus in, with the golden horse. So Russians knew it even earlier, but it was of different size, the Greek plin. Uh, so this is how uh, this uh, brick turned around. So once again, so this is unformed brick from uh, 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 from Kirktepe, I think I'm sorry for the quality of a uh, photo. This is the Guvalak, so this globes of the earth from a uh, uh, fountain Fergana today. Quite easy way of building, and this is the uh, fortification of uh, uh, Afrasiab, with uh, made of the formed brick and. This is how we made the bricks of uh, Sogdian uh, size for restoration purposes in Panjakent uh, several years ago. I would say it's quite a hard work and it's much easier to speak about bricks than to make them. Thank you very much for your attention.